four extra base hits between them. And they are ready to go as the first game here on Saturday from the Little League Softball World Series and Haley Arvidsson delivering a strike. Look, she had a really good performance and one of the players that's really stood out this week from Greenville. Well, already we're seeing a great example of what makes her so effective in the circle and it's getting ahead of batters. To start off this game, a first pitch strike and then she follows that one up with another curveball outside a foul ball. And getting ahead of batters is really important for pitchers because it feels like they have all the momentum, all the energy in these at-bats. And she really trusts in her defense to make the plays behind her. Hayden Bush swinging away at that one into right field and coming in, charging, and Ava Handelman scoops it up. Tiffany, I think we kind of spoke that one into existence, already seeing some fantastic defensive play by New York. It's Ava Handelman getting a great read on this shallow fly ball out into right field with the sliding grab, making that one look stylish as well. You know, coming into this pool play, it was the defense for New York, New York that really stood out in addition to pitching. It was pitching and defense, and that's how they got here. Yesterday, they made some outstanding plays as well. Let them down in key moments as they were in a 0-0 ball game with Nevada. Excuse me, Texas. Stella Bertoli over at third base is going to make some great plays as well. We talked about Haley Arvidsson, how she's more of a pitch to contact type of pitcher. So she's not going to rack up a ton of strikeouts, but what she does is she gets great spin on her pitches, great movement, and induces a lot of miss hits, which is going to be key going up against such a potent offense for Missouri. Missouri drop their first game against Virginia, 4-1, to one, and since then they've come right back with Wins against Texas coming from behind Thursday and a shutout of Arizona yesterday as Paige Besky is aboard with a one-out walk. That's an uncharacteristic free pass that we just saw from Ar Arvidsson, but a great at-bat by Paige Besky. Being patient, even knowing that Arvidsson likes to attack the strike zone, she was waiting for a ball right in her sweet spot, and if she didn't get it, she's going to take first. Gracie Britton who also is the catcher for this team, now trying to move along Besky, if possible. Again, a player you've liked just the way she plays her style since watching her from Wednesday. Well, and you can just tell that she has a very high softball IQ. And one of the, the reasons why I say that is because she's back there calling the pitches from behind home plate. And we even got an opportunity to talk to her dad, Nick Britton, who's a coach on this team, saying that whenever she has any sort of free time, she is constantly watching softball. She is wanting to learn, try new things in practice, and it's definitely paid off for her. Another familiar duo here in Arvidsson and Kiapa. And you see Kiapa just letting Arvidsson know, like, we're going to be on the same page again, a battery. And this is special because we have those two batteries between Britton and Watson, Arvidsson and Kiapa. Really good connections between catcher and pitcher. Eight straight balls now thrown by Arvidsson and back-to-back -back walks given up to these Missouri hitters with the cleanup hitter on the way and Ava Hansen. Yeah, if you're Missouri, this is the exact hitter that you want up in this situation early in this game. Big power hitter. When we talk about the power, I mean, Ava Hansen is just one of those players who's definitely brought an electrifying bat. We've seen it already this tournament. And let's flash back to the big bat. This pitch on the outside half of the plate, actually, but she gets her hands inside of it, hits it right on the sweet spot of that barrel. A really powerful swing, and you can see her even practice it in her swings in between pitches. Right there, you see her trying to work her hands to get inside of that ball. What that does is it allows your barrel to stay behind the pitch. The ball stays on that barrel longer, and it sails over the fence. 
That one gets away from Chiappa and the runners advance, but really it was Hanson who was the catalyst there Thursday, that three-run homer that we just showed you against Texas. After they were trailing 3 nothing going into that fourth inning, they scored five unanswered runs to pick up their first win of the tournament. And the strikeout there, catching her, looking, and Arvidsson records the second out of the inning. I really like this call, this pitch coming up and inside to Ava Hansen. It almost seemed like she was expecting it to go outside. Typically, Haley Arvidsson's a pitcher that likes to throw that curveball going away from the right-hand batters, and this one coming right up and inside for a big-time second out. No let up here with Brooklyn Center now at the plate. We featured her in the open. Three RBI in the last two games for Center, and she has two runners in scoring position. Center, the 5'5", five, 13-year-old, five, celebrated a birthday earlier this summer. And she's a player who can put the ball on a rope. She committed to that one. Arvidsson ahead, one and two. There's that change up you're going to see out of Arvidsson. And it's so deceptive because it looks the exact same coming out of her hand as her higher velocity pitches. Sometimes you might see pitchers either slow down their wind up or even have a completely different grip that the pit, that the hitters can see. And she hides that change up really well, so you're going to see several swings and misses on that pitch. Outside corner, back-to-back -back strikeouts for Arvidsson. Two and really the bats needing to wake up for New York there in search of more offense to try to back up. Haley Arvidsson as they improved to seven hits yesterday. Adriana Diorio leading things off for this Eastern Region runner-up. And the pitcher in the circle for Missouri is Kennedy Watson. Watson with a one and one record. Remember, she pitched those four shutout innings versus Texas in that win Thursday. Well, and the one thing that makes Kennedy Watson completely different from a lot of the other pitchers that we see here in Greenville is the fact that she's left-handed. Not a lot of these batters are familiar with seeing left-handed pitchers on a regular basis. And I thought it was interesting talking to Gracie Britton about what Kennedy Watson does well when she is pitching her best. And she said that she throws the ball down in the zone, keeps it right at the knees, and then works that change up in there as well. Keeping it low there, both called for balls and Diorio ahead in the count. This team, again, searching for hits. I want to correct myself. They only had three hits yesterday. Already early in this game, we're seeing that low and outside corner called for a strike. And I bet uh, both Britton and Watson are happy after a couple of those calls. Watson leaves it out there. Hayden Bush coming from shortstop, throws it over to first, and one down. Hayden Bush is very smooth over there at shortstop. A great defensive athlete gets good reads on the ball. This one, a softly hit ball on a changeup. And so Hayden Bush knew right off the bat that she had to charge it, got rid of it. It's a smooth looking play for the shortstop already in this game. Haley Arvidsson over to Bush once again. And again, the charge from Bush helping that one to get the 6-3 put out two away. I think I'm having a bit of deja vu. That almost looked like the exact same ground ball. Executed it perfectly yet again, charging it, firing it over there. And of course, acting like it's no big deal. <laughs> H-bomb, that's what they like to call her. Great glove in the field. And Alyssa Chiappa looks at strike one. Chiappa, one of the team captains for New York. Father Joe Chiappa is the manager. Very heavily involved in the Little League scene.
And she's trailing one and two. It was Kiapa who had one of those three hits. That one high and inside makes her turn away two and two. Foul ball, but standing in there strong is Kiapa. I like her fouling off that pitch, too. You could kind of see her initial reaction after a ball outside was called for a strike earlier in this at, this at bat. Again, making an adjustment as a batter to what you're going to see back there called. So she said, you know what? I'm not going to strike out looking on this one. I am going to foul that one off and see a new pitch. And she readies, stands in the box, and awaits the pitch from Watson. And strikes out. One, two, three inning for Kennedy Watson. Kennedy Watson working that. A long time bond between the pitcher Haley Arvidson and catcher Alyssa Kiapa. As Madison, you mentioned, they've been playing together since the third grade, and Kiapa's been catching her since that time. And they were able to recreate a photo when you think about how they were able to just keep that connection going over the years. You flash back to ages eight years old with these two, and then they had the chance to recreate it earlier this summer. You just can't help but smile when you see that picture. I am so glad that they recreated the picture from back when they were eight years old. And I think it's so fun to see that not just are they battery mates out there on the field, but truly they are friends and family off the field. This one driven into center field over the head of McHugh and Kennedy Watson rounding all the way to third base, standing up there. Another extra base hit for this Missouri team. This is a great swing by Kennedy Watson. She's crowding the plate, so this outside pitch actually looks kind of down the middle to the left-handed batter, and she just smacks that one over the head of Emma McHugh out there in center field, and it rolls all the way to the fence. Kennedy Watson not hesitating at all, rounding second, headed into third. That's a great way for Missouri to start off this top of the second. Arvidson gives up her first hit of the ball game, and for Watson, the second triple this Missouri team has hit, but more importantly for Nick Britton, he's happy to see some production maybe from the bottom half of this lineup outside of Britton, Hansen, and Sinner, who has done a lot of damage. Yeah, coming into this game, we had talked about how Hanson, Center, and Britton were 13 for 25 with four extra base hits. Well, the rest of the team was four for 39 with zero extra base hits. So Kennedy Watson says, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and put one of those extra base hits down there. Afton Regan trying to lay down the bunt foul ball. Regan, who also has seen time in the circle, throughout their run to the Little League Softball World Series, a well-rounded game. Her dad is one of the coaches. Thought about it, did she commit? No ball one. You can see how shallow the infield is playing. And the reason for doing that is so that if a ground ball is hit to the infield, they have an opportunity to get that runner out at home. Instead, Arvidsson collects her third strikeout. Haley Arvidsson really seems to settle in when she gets into a bit of a jam. This one, a rise ball going up and inside to the right-handed batters yet again. It's a huge swing of momentum. I like the toughness that Arvidsson has shown, and she really enjoys being there in the circle can also play third base as well but really relishes the opportunity to stand in the circle you see the field crew did a nice job with that softball in the middle kiapa 
couldn't get that one. I was just spinning back towards her. Those are always tough to catch. Yeah, let's take another look at this one here. These ones popping up right in front of her. You can see how she tracks it all the way. She's just not able to get up and out of that squat in time to catch it. And ringing up, Lydia Casey. She sits down after looking at called strike three. Again, Arvidsson just settling in, going right after these batters, getting ahead, knowing that, hey, they're going to try to lay down a bunt, so she's going to put even more spin on those pitches, work it up in the zone, and ends up finding herself with back-to-back -back Ks. Caitlin Romanetto swinging a miss there. Arvidsson, 5-1, Caitlin Romanetto. 5-10, and it's Arvidsson who's going right at Romanetto. So far, Missouri 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position. The 2-1. Romanetto smacks that one in the left field. Hard hit over the head of the left fielder going to the fence. That's going to score a run. Another extra base hit for Missouri, and they're on the board first. And that is the exact type of production that Missouri needed from the bottom half of their order. A very pretty swing by Caitlin Romanetto getting all of this one, driving it over the head of Juliana Lorem over there in left field, rolls all the way to the wall. So Kennedy Watson is going to score easily from third base and another runner into scoring position for Missouri. That done with two outs and top of the order back with Hayden Bush. The 12-year-old who had a great run during regionals. This one popped up. Underneath it is Arvidsson. That's Hannah Arvidsson, the sister of Haley. And that ends the inning. But not before the double from Caitlin Romanetto gives Missouri the 1-0 lead. That wonderful run in Oklahoma City. I don't know about you, Tiffany, but I'm having flashbacks of that incredible play that Odyssey made at the World Series. She was diving in, was able to make a tag on the runner trying to score from third base, coming out of the circle, making just such an athletic play, a play that I have termed the Odyssey play forever <laughs> in my mind. It will be called the Odyssey play. I was going to say, we'll see if we see some Odyssey plays here today. New York flash some great leather and on the bat the lefty Savannah Nordstrom over to third base and the ground out for out number one. Kennedy Watson really seems to be settling in out there trusting her defense to work behind her working the ball down in the zone that's why we've seen several ground balls hit to her infielders already. Ava Handelman who's had the most success this week for this New York team. Only player in the lineup with more than one hit during pool play. Here she puts it on the ground, center once again, busy, and two away. And one adjustment that we're going to need to see out of New York as this game goes on is trying to get their barrels underneath that low pitch. You can just hear the way it's coming off of the bat that it's hitting right off the end. And that's why they're not squaring it up completely. So one way to try to fix that is to swing underneath the ball, see if you can get more of that sweet spot on the barrel. Stella Bertoli looks that one in for ball one. A 12-year-old from Orangeburg, New Jersey. Goes to school with a lot of these young ladies in South Orange Middle School. And this is a team that's been together for some time. A lot of the ladies very familiar. Even uh, Adriana Lorem, along with uh, Alyssa Chiappa, playing flag football together in the area. I would love to watch these young ladies play flag football. I bet it is so much fun. 
Flag football is always something I wanted to play, never got an opportunity yeah. <laughs> to, but it definitely seems popular up in New York. Kiapa, Joe Kiapa, the coach, had a little lead going. And Bertoli remaining patient and getting the base on ball. You could still see Watson trying to work that low and outside corner. She was able to get one called for a strike, even mixed in a change up in there. So far today, haven't seen much of that upper part of the strike zone being called. And Britton throwing down the second base. Bertoli staying put at first. So with those pitches not being called up in the zone, that favors a pitcher like Kennedy Watson, who you mentioned likes to keep it low. Oh, absolutely. I would just be working that low and outside part of the strike zone. And Bertoli able to take second base. Gracie Britton already working really hard back there behind the plate, and it looks like Coach Nick Britton's going to come out to have a conversation with his pitcher and the rest of his infield. Dry it off a little bit. You can pop it around. Okay? It helps dry your hand off. Okay? Use it. You have to use it. Nick Britton with this program, a former wrestler at Iowa State. Very grounded, centered individual when we talk to him, but also highly competitive. And a lot of these coaches have had to remind their pitchers to utilize whatever you can to keep your hands as dry as possible with the heat and humidity here in North Carolina. Hey, that was a simple message there. You've got a rosin bag out there. Try to use it whatever you can to get a good grip on that softball, especially for somebody that relies so heavily on the lower part of the zone. That grip becomes very important. The left fielder, Lorem, swinging through that one. Count even, two all with two outs and a runner at second. So the twos have it. Watson, the pitch. Low in the zone, ball three. Juliana Lorem, the 12 year old. Strikes out. Well, Kennedy Watson, this inning, Still trying to work that outside part of the zone, but she says, you know what, full count. I'm going to bring this drop ball low and inside to the right-handed batter, getting strikeouts in different ways. Missouri's still leading it, one nothing. because she wants to play in the Little League Softball World Series when she gets a couple of years older. Well, this is the first time that anybody, any team from Daniel Boone Little League has made it on the softball side. The boys made it back in 2006. Pinch hitter in now is Sydney Palmer at the plate. How advanced were you with your sign making growing <laughs> up or perhaps any of your siblings? Not very. I was not nearly as good at making signs as Kinsley Washington or Watson is. I need to step my game up, though. Yeah. Ah, she's inspiring me that I need to go and make Number some signs when I get back to the hotel. <laughs> it's a true expression of, of love. You're showing that you're invested. You care. Maybe you'll do that for your younger sister, <laughs> Allie. I don't know. <laughs> I think I should make a sign for you up here in the booth. <laughs> I'll just constantly turn it towards you, motivate you as we're doing these broadcasts, talking about these fantastic games that we're seeing out here wonderful young ladies such neat stories we've seen and, and and gotten to know them over the time and you know you ask them the whys of 
why they participate in, in Little League, meeting new people, the experience that they gain here, the socialization aspect, and of course now the creative expression, as we've seen displayed here as well. Gracie Britton. The catcher smacks it into right field, opposite field, base hit, and one aboard. Gracie Britton has one of those powerful swings in this Missouri offense, and we saw it right there on that swing. This is a pitch that looks like it's coming inside, keeps her hands inside of that ball and drives it opposite field, out to right field. Almost hit it too hard to where she got a little close down there. Throwing it to second base as Britton takes off and then moves to third as the throw rolls into the outfield. Seeing the aggressive base running out of Missouri as well. Gracie Britton taken off on this pitch. She slides in and immediately sees when that ball goes into the grass, doesn't hesitate at all, advances all the way to third base to see if they can tack on another insurance run here in the top of the third and one of the hottest hitters in this tournament at the plate in Ava Hansen, well-documented, above a 1,000 slugging percentage, had a three-run homer already in this Little League Softball World Series. And Hansen struck out looking her first time up, so Arvidsson has to be feeling confident about that. The 2-1 pitch, and you see she's staying outside and away from Hanson. I'd be curious to see if as this game goes on, we might start to see Arvidsson trying to work that low and outside part of the strike zone. That seems to be Kennedy Watson's bread and butter on the other side of the field. And you know that that's something that they've got to be communicating in the dugout too. Swing through that one, had the green light all the way for Hanson. It's three balls and two strikes. Before striking out in that first inning, it was Hanson who had her last three hits, a home run and a double, but once again, Arvidsson winning that battle. As Haley Arvidsson strikes out now Ava Hanson for the second time today. It's a fantastic Center. location for that pitch. And Tiffany, you had just mentioned how much power Hanson has up at the plate. She was working outside, working off the plate to see if she can get a swing out of the zone. That one, a curveball right there. First pitch swinging for Brooklyn Center, and Center drives home Gracie Britton, 2 nothing. So the two-out success for Missouri continuing here in the third. Brooklyn Center going up into this at bat knowing that Haley Arvidsson likes to get ahead in the count. This one, she just clobbers that thing out to left field. A line drive dropping right in front of Lorem for an RBI for Brooklyn Center. And so many emotions running through this moment for Haley Arvidsson who has done an outstanding job for this New York team. Pitching her crew all the way to this point every inning and she continues to push on here. And she is a fantastic pitcher. They started off that East Regional, her throwing back to back perfect games. There are not too many pitchers across the country or even pitchers that have played the game of softball that have perfect games under their belt. And then to be able to throw them back to back was super impressive. And Nick Britton on what Matt Schick has dubbed the bat phone. <laughs> Perhaps there may be a change on the field. Pinch runner coming in. And that's Nova Porter. Porter will tag center. And Nova Porter will stand at first base. And we have seen Nova Porter be a game changer with her speed. She is lightning fast out there, great instincts, gets a great jump off of the base. I would not be surprised if she tries to steal second here. 
She does that almost, a hit and run action, if you will, as Kennedy Watson puts that one in the left field. And again, that speed on the base pass from Nova Porter paying off. Yeah, Nova Porter was taking off on that pitch. And Kennedy Watson getting a good piece of this one, driving it opposite field. And you'll notice Nova Porter coming around second base. She's got her eyes on that ball out into left field and decides that it's deep enough to allow her to get into third base safely. And now two runners into scoring position for Missouri. Joe Chiappa, they put so much pressure on themselves, but the encouraging words coming from your coach have to make you feel at least a little bit calmer knowing that you can do it. Well, you and I just, I, I love that advice. Uh, you can't do anything about the last play. Yeah. You can't do anything about the last game. You can't do anything about the last inning, the last at bat, the last pitch. You have to flush it and just move on. And that was his exact message to his team when he came out there. Look, this is still a, a two run ball game. Mm -hmm. There is still a lot of time left in this ball game for New York to come back and he's just trying to bring out some of that confidence that he knows his team has because they've seen it before. And I think this is a really good example, a tangible moment of when you listen to collegiate players and talking about flushing it, how do you do it? Well, it's these moments and experiences right here where you learn how to do that in real time. And I think what helps is having a specific mental routine before every pitch. And this isn't just for the pitcher out there in the circle, but even the defenders as well. To have a certain thought or a certain movement with your feet or something you do with your glove and even up at the, up at the plate when you're batting as well, just to have something to clear your mind so you're not worried about anything that's happening. It's like every single pitch is a 0-0 ball game, no pressure on, just going out there and do what you know how to do because these young ladies are so talented and they have worked so hard to get here, practice so hard, not to mention it is hot. It is a hot day. They're having to deal with a bunch of different things out there. You can just see how much effort Haley Arvidsson is putting into every single pitch, trying to get that outside corner, that one just barely missing off of the plate. But she is a fighter out there in the circle. The 2-2 to Regan. On the inside part of the plate, really close. Thought that one was going to end the inning. But again, a part of the process, adjusting to the strike zone. An eighth pitch of this at bat. He's on the way. That one, ring her up. And Haley Arvidsson once again getting out of a jam. Arvidsson. The game face is on, and look at her. She's got to feel confident going back to that dugout. Arvidsson racking up the strikeout. She didn't get the call on the inside, so she goes outside, and she's got seven Ks already in this game. My dude in the middle. You know, these players aren't just strategizing out on the field, but these fans are strategizing in the stands as well. We know the fans are fans of the fans mm -hmm. in the stands. Mm -hmm. And now we know they like umbrellas too. Dr. Seuss would have been really proud oh, of yes. you, by the way, as Kennedy Watson starts off this inning, striking out the first batter she now faces in Emma one, McHugh. Hannah, I mean, look at the swivel on the fan up there. You know, everybody's appreciating it. Oh, she's got it going on. That's the multitasking right there, the umbrella uh -huh. and the fanning yourself. Uh -huh. With a smile, <laughs> might I add. Well, it's summertime, obviously, all across the country, but in different parts of uh, the United States, you know, heat hits you differently. We've talked about the dry heat from Nevada I'm sure the humidity is very familiar to those in the southeast. New York and Missouri is like, yeah, we got a lot of heat too. <laughs> <laughs> no let up. Well, that humidity is something that definitely seems to be affecting a lot of these players, specifically the pitchers out there. They're using rosin bags, dirt, even towels in their back pockets to make sure that they're getting a good grip on that softball before every pitch. 
And what is it about Hannah Arvidsson for New York who shows off her switch hitting abilities? And we've seen this before. After getting two strikes, she'll move to from the left side to the right side part of the plate. You know, my guess is that she's more comfortable in a two-strike situation going from the right side. She likes to start from the left side with that slap and that bunt to see if she can get something on the ground, get something going. And her two-strike approach is to flip over, get over to that right side, see if she can pop something through the infield. That one, a nice-looking drop ball out of the hand of Kennedy Watson. Harbinson just not able to make contact with it. Three strikeouts in a row for Watson going back to that last inning. And the second baseman, Adriana Diorio, sees that one in, called for a strike. Also plays basketball and volleyball. The 2 1 from Watson. Mark Teagle says, strike two. That pitch up in the zone isn't something we've seen called consistently. We know he does like that lower part of the zone, but that drop ball right about ar armpit height. You guys like the game so far that Gracie Britton is calling behind the plate for Watson, and she moves quickly, full count. And the two-out walk. Good job by Diorio watching those pitches go by. A couple of close ones as well. Still being patient in that leadoff position. Her coaches say that she is a team spark in the clutch, and I know that they would love to continue this two-out rally here to see if they can get something going offensively in the bottom of the third. She has the chance to help her own cause. Extremely hard worker for this team. She grounded out to short in her first at bat and see strike one. Well, again, she's been a major part of their success, helping them win the East Regional Championship. Pitcher in the circle all throughout. Watson, the 0-2, on the ground just past the glove. Coming up is Paige Besky over to first base in time. We move for Little League World Series championship. And she said, don't let the game be bigger than it is and focus on the small details. And what she meant by that is running out bases, laying down sacrifice buns, moving people over, advancing them to the next base. Those are the things that are going to help you win ball games. And I think we've already seen some great examples of that from this Missouri squad coming back after that first game loss here in Greenville and turning things completely around. And that coming from a second team All-American outfielder and Kayla Kessinger. And not only that, that Missouri Tigers team led by Larissa Anderson made it all the way to Super Regionals this past season. So a bright future ahead for softball in Missouri overall. Yeah, Missouri is definitely a fun team to watch. They swing big bats up there. We just saw, you know, Hattie Moore had 17 home runs last season. They do not get cheated on their swings. And I think we can already tell from this Missouri Little League team that they don't get cheated on a lot of their swings <laughs> up there either. Leading it off is the pinch hitter for Lydia Casey. Here's Mackenzie Lucas. Lucas getting her first at bat of the game. A future radiologist. She's got some pop in the bat and one of the team jokesters they say as well. The 0-2 to Lucas. 
fouls that one off. Missouri. Very proud. Coming through Como. And Lucas strikes out. One away. I like how we're seeing the fight out of Haley Arvidson out there in the circle. We saw her get a bit frustrated last inning, not getting some of those calls that she wanted. She comes right back here in the top of the fourth inning and still attacks the strike zone, working that curveball not just outside, but also up in the zone as well. And Arvidson, who's typically not what you want to call a strikeout pitcher, sure is racking him up today. Counting in my book, I think I've got six so far. Let me make it seven. Yeah, I think I'm going to take seven and raise you one more. <laughs> Eight strikeouts for Haley Arvidson already on the day. You're just testing my math skills, that's, you know? You know, that's been a constant theme throughout our... Our games thus far, the math skills, and you have shown yourself <laughs> superior there. Oh, thank you. That is very <laughs> generous of you. Caitlin Romanetto is the ninth victim for Arvidsson. Again, this response from Haley Arvidsson. Going out there, attacking the strike zone, working this one again. It's that curveball. It doesn't just have spin that's working away from these right-handed batters, but it's also going up in the zone as well. And it seems to be freezing them. They think it's going to go way out of the zone. Ends up hanging right there at the top part of the strike zone. And another big-time K for Arvidsson. And the two-out single to right by the leadoff hitter, Hayden Bush. You know, this Missouri team seems to thrive in two out situation. I it's two out situations. I believe that's their fourth hit already in this game with two outs. Hayden Bush coming up, knowing that Arvidsson likes to work the ball outside, says, you know what, I'm going to hit this one opposite field, drop it right in front of Ava Handelman out there and right to see if they can get something going here in the top of the fourth inning. And another swing first pitch coming in. As she collects it is Ava Handelman, and that one ends the inning. Runner left on base, one hit given up, but no runs pushed across. New York has a chance to chip away when we come back. Network. Some of the pitchers to watch. You're seeing one in the circle in Haley Arvidsson doing a good job. But how about Cambry Casey? And Jenna Kiefer, they have also impressed as well. JoJo Cornell, can't forget about her for Nevada. There are a number of great arms in the circle that we've liked watching so far. And that's the first base hit given up by Kennedy Watson. Speaking of really good pitching performances, it comes off the bat of the leader for this team, Alyssa Kiapa. You know, Tiffany, we talked about some of the adjustments that New York was going to need to make offensively. And you'll notice that Alyssa Kiapa crowds the plate. She puts her toes right on that chalk line, knowing that Kennedy Watson liked to work the outer part of the strike zone. She gets all of that one, driving it right back up the middle. And that could be the spark that New York needs. Again, hits have been scarce for this New York team in their two games, but now First base hit of the day off the bat of Kiapa, Savannah Nordstrom. Now at the plate, and Nordstrom is one of those players who had a hit against Texas. Snap throw back to first. Gracie Britton just checking on Kiapa. Taken all the way, strike one to Savannah Nordstrom. A player who could change the game with one swing of the bat and tie it up. Right back to Watson. Watson quickly goes to second base, gets the lead runner. Nordstrom legs it out at first. 
no hesitation there from Watson when it was hit back to her. It's a really smart play by the pitcher. Nordstrom has a ton of power from the left-handed batter's box. Hits this one off the end of the bat and a slow rolling ground ball. So I kind of thought maybe she was just going to think to go to first to get that sure out. But you're exactly right, Tiffany. No hesitation at all. Goes up there, scoops it, and fires it to Hayden Bush, who is positioned perfectly to get that out over it too. Daniel Boone Little League out of Columbia, Missouri, making their first appearance. Uh, coming out of a county, Boone County, that was really hit hard during please. COVID, but businesses still Number found two. a way Julia to support these young Lord ladies Lord. after regionals. They did a fundraiser and Helped out with some travel expenses, social media, and the reach they were able to have. And good example of small town USA. I know many are looking on and watching these games back home. They have a 2 nothing lead over New York, who is trying to get a run across. Eva Handelman, and that one goes foul. It's a really tough play for any defense to make a ball kind of find, finding its way into no man's land out there in foul territory down the right field line and Caitlin Romanetto got a good jump on it just not able to get there to get that out. Handelman over to third base coming in is center and she gets out number two. Another nice play by Brooklyn Center. We saw her make a fantastic backhanded play at shortstop when Hayden Bush was in the circle pitching. Now she's moved on over to third base and continues to show off that arm strength defensively. So Juliana Lorem standing at second base, the pinch runner. She's the first player from New York to reach That bag as Stella Bertoli looks at strike one. Bertoli is a player who Coach Chiappa says is always engaged in every pitch and waits on that one, Hayden Bush. And the ground out to shortstop, and that's it. Runner left on base. The leadoff single wasted for Chiappa as the shutout is still on. Kennedy, I'm like really ready to dive in, but we also have a fantastic softball game right in front of us, Missouri and New York. This is a game that we very much anticipated calling. Haley Arvidsson, who has been great in the circle for this South Orange Town Little League group. And she delivers a strike in there to Gracie Britton, the heart of the order on the way. And, and she's really done a nice job against them. Uh, struck out both Hanson and Sinner. Giving up a walk and a single the last time up to Britton. Tiffany, I also think it's important to note that Gracie Britton is batting left-handed here. <laughs> we have seen her bat right-handed in every single at-bat in this World Series so far, except for this one, showing off just how athletic and versatile she is up at the plate. She's got power from both the right and the left side. And off the glove of the shortstop Arvidsson and aboard safely at first is Gracie Britton. I don't think there's a lot of players and hitters in softball today that can say in the same game they got a hit from both the right and the left side, but that's exactly what Bracey, Gracie Britton has done in this game. Back in the third inning, got that base hit to right field from the right side, 
and then a base hit up the middle from the left. It's kind of like who her two favorite softball players are. So that was, you know, her channeling her Amanda Lorenz. And then her first at bat, we heard from Hattie Moore earlier, the catcher from Missouri. That's what she does from the right side. <laughs> Also a big fan of Jenna Laird, too. Lead-off batter gets on base, shows off the speed, and we saw Gracie Britton steal second earlier today as well. So Britton has had a hit in each game of this Little League Softball World Series. And Ava Hansen, who was one of those bats that have been scorching as of late. Struck out twice. There's Britton trying to go for her second stolen base, but she's tagged out. And she's still standing there convinced that she wasn't tagged. And a replay is on the way. Let's look at it again. She immediately looked up to her coach and dad, Nick Britton, over there at third base saying that she was not tagged. But from my view right there, it looks like the tag is applied. Let's take another view. Fantastic shot by our camera crew here. Oh, it looks yeah. like she got her right mm -hmm. there. Grazed the back of Britton ever so slightly. Perhaps she didn't feel that one going in to second base. Remember the call on the field from Don Mason looking over was that she was out. And I like this coverage here too that we're seeing from New York. Typically you're gonna see the shortstop come over to cover the steal, but I think because they're respecting the power that Missouri has in their bats, specifically from the right-handed side of the box, they shifted Hannah Arvidsson more into the 5-6 hole and told Adriana Diorio at second base to cover second on those steals. So she was shifted a little bit more up the middle, was able to get there in time, come all the way across and applied this tag and a great throw by Alyssa Chiappa from back behind the plate as well. She was ready for it as soon as Gracie Britton took off from first base. That throw on the money and it looks pretty clear there that Gracie Britton was tagged out. Diorio applying that tag. But they're still reviewing it. Looking things over up at Williamsport, and that's something that's new this year is the fact that instant replay has been instituted. These volunteer umpires don't have easy jobs, but they want to make sure they get the call right for these young ladies. And look, I can see why maybe Gracie Britton thought that she wasn't tagged because it looked like just the, the tip of the glove got her right on the back as she was sliding in. A lot of things happening, a really close play, but just solid defense yet again that we're seeing from New York. And that's been one of their calling cards to get to this point. And the call on the field stands. Last look at it here as this is the first out of the inning catching Gracie Britton. Great job by Diorio again coming across. There's a lot of things happening. The ball's coming to you. That runner is sliding in there and she's able to hang on to that one and apply the tag for the first out in this inning. So now base is clear for Eva Hansen who we mentioned has struck out both times at the plate. Arvidsson getting the best of her. And the cleanup hitter for Missouri. Chasing that one, can't get it. There's that change up. It's a great pitch. You can see a big smile on Ava Hansen's face knowing she was way out in front of that off speed. That one called for strike three. Second time she's been caught looking today. And Haley Arvidsson reached double digits now with 10 strikeouts. And Arvidsson went right back to the same pitch she struck her out on back in the first inning. And it's a rise ball coming up and inside to Ava Hansen. Again, you wonder if maybe she's thinking she was going to see a pitch on the outside half of the plate. But Arvidsson decides to change things up, come up and in underneath the hands. And that's a big strikeout of a really strong hitter from Missouri. 
Still trying to keep this a 2-0 ball game with a chance and six outs remaining for New York. So Arvidsson just needs to retire Brooklyn center to give her team a chance. Center is 13 years old. Great bond with her mom, Kathy. Both Kathy and Brian are both high school teachers. And the connection and tie with family, you hear it with team, but it starts at home. And Brooklyn says her father, Brian, has really helped to make her a better person and player. But striking out and sitting down is Brooklyn center, Haley Arvidsson. She's got it working. Arvidsson stepping up to the challenge, going after the heart of this Missouri order, using that curveball on the outside half of the plate, keeping her team in this ball game. Missouri's still up 2 0. Your phone and your device is in your hand for a long time, so you need something cool and comfortable as the ground out to start off this inning by Bridget Linehan. Number Kennedy Watson just continues to be really efficient working the ball down in the zone and that's why we've seen so many ground balls induced by her today trusting in that defense behind her to make the plays and so far they've been able to do that. Emma McHugh trying to lay down the bunt. Goes foul 0-1-1. Yeah, Watson just looks like she's gotten stronger throughout the days. She got rocked a little bit against Virginia in that 4-1 loss, but since then, she's come back and looked good and keeping the ball on the ground, as you mentioned, Madison. Well, and it's just her ability to keep the ball down in the zone. And we saw earlier in this game, some of them going a little bit too far down. So she made an adjustment, brought that rosin bag out there to make sure she got a good grip of those seams when she went to throw the pitch. But that ball has a ton of movement on it. And right back to Watson. One, two, three inning. And the 10th ground out of the ball game for Watson. Missouri holding tight to their 2 0 lead. We have seen some fantastic two-way players so far in this World Series, and Kennedy Watson for Missouri is showing off yet again, driving this one all the way out into center field for a triple, and then driving it opposite field, dumping in a little single, but she doesn't just stop there. She's doing it in the circle as well, working this pitch low in the zone. She's gotten herself four strikeouts already on the day, but inducing a ton of ground balls, getting out of some jams 
and she has been feeling it out there in the circle. How appropriate that she leads off the inning, top of the sixth, and two for two today is the bottom of the order. She has helped to ignite for Missouri, coming up with that extra base hit earlier in her first at bat, and Watson can keep it going. Look, this Missouri team has looked really good. Both of these programs are doing something special in New York, uh, unique. First time here for each of their Little League programs. And for Missouri, they're bouncing back and responding really well after that opening day loss to Virginia. Won their last two games. 11 hits and 11 runs coming into today, so they were able to pour it on. But, you know, Joe Chiappa has to be encouraged, too, with what Haley Arvidson has done. Double-digit strikeouts, and she's held them to just two runs. Oh, the fight that we've seen out of Arvidson in the circle has been fantastic today. That one looks like it just gets away from her. Knowing that Kennedy Watson had kind of sprayed the ball all over the field, tried to work that one up and inside, and it looked like it got her right there near the elbow on her right arm. Taking another look at it here. Oof, yeah, right there on almost the funny bone <laughs> of that elbow. But, you know, we were just talking about the fight that we've seen out of Haley Arvidson. It would have been really easy for her earlier in the game to get frustrated, to get really down on herself maybe not getting some of the calls that she would normally get from behind the plate, but she just kept fighting, kept working on what has gotten her to this point, relying on her spin, relying on her defense, and has kept her team in this ballgame. A uh, terrific response from Haley Arvidson. Just gave up two runs in those second and third innings, respectively, and outside of that, she's done a really nice job Again, has pitched every pitch of this Little League Softball World Series for South Orangetown Little League. And nearing the century mark as they're making a substitution for Missouri. Chris, who we saw a defensive substitution in right field last inning, and she's awaiting her first at-bat of the game. We'll look there at Steve Reagan, one of the coaches, along with Carrie Bush and Nick Britton, who's the manager. They've done an outstanding job with Daniel Boone Little League, Central Region Champions. We talk so much about Missouri softball. Chris, one of those big fans of the Tigers. Swing and a miss. Arvidsson ahead in the count 0-2. One thing that Arvidsson has done consistently throughout this World Series is get ahead of batters, throwing first pitch strikes. We mentioned coming into this game that she had thrown 18 first pitch strikes in both of the games she's thrown in here in Greenville. And she has continued that trend yet again. A good take by Christ there. That one just missing up and outside of the zone, but very composed watching that one go by. That one coming inside for ball two. Caught looking, freezing these batters. Another strikeout for Haley Arvidson. Arvidson has just been on a roll out there. When she doesn't get a call on one side of the plate, she makes an adjustment, go to the, goes to the other side, and really that curveball, she has gotten several strikeouts of these right-handed batters on. They haven't been able to make an adjustment to it yet, and she just continues to battle for her squad. Dozen strikeouts for Haley Arvidson. 
I've got to believe at least half of now them back. have been Number eight. looking. Nova Porter. Nova Porter will be inserted into this game. We love the story of Nova Porter and just learning about this young lady. Tough as nails, tussles on the mat with the boys, big time wrestler. All around athlete, wakeboarding, wake surfing, tries to lay down the butt, advancing the runner to second base. And two away. It's a great job by Nova Porter, getting that ball down into fair territory, advancing that runner on over into scoring position. And heads up defense as well by New York. The corners crashing on the bunt to try to make a play on it. And what ended up happening was third base was unoccupied. So as soon as that throw was made over to first, they all immediately recognized it and sprinted over to third to prevent that runner from advancing all the way over there. The nine hole hitter, Caitlin Romanetto, we talked about how the bottom of the order has produced. She drove home the first run with a double back in the second. And lines it right to Diorio at second base. So top of the order coming up, Diorio starting things off for New York. Can they rally back here in the bottom of the sixth? thrown by Kennedy Watson just one hit allowed top of the order up for New York and Alyssa Kiapa who's in the hole is the lone base hit for this team Only two runners have gone as far as second base Diorio says let me just try to get on well, she is the spark plug for this offense. And at this point in the game, they need base runners. Pass that bat along to your teammate. Three balls and a strike to the New York infielder. And another good pitch from Kennedy Watson. Go high, go low, work that zone, girl. And that one is ball four. So the leadoff runner on base for New York. It's a fantastic leadoff at bat by DiOrio. Working her way to a 3-0 count. Ends up watching two strikes go by, but holds up on that close one. Called for ball four there to get a rally started for New York. Third walk given up by Watson. The rally caps are on the grounder over to Besky at second base. Bobbles it, but still able to collect it in time to get Diorio out at second. Good contact made by Haley Arvidsson up at the plate. Trying to hit it through that 3-4 hole, but Paige Besky able to knock this one down in front of her, pick it up barehanded, and fire it over to Hayden Bush to get that lead runner out at second base. Alyssa Kiapa turns away from that strike one. Kiapa with the lone base hit today. Again, hitting has been an area of concern for New York, just three and each of their first two games. And they need some offense right now from their leader, Melissa Kiapa. She had to come up with some big hits in that region championship. An RBI to help boost them over New Jersey. Hobbled by Watson, and Watson not able to collect it in time. And Kiapa is aboard again with the base hit. Good things can happen when you put the ball in play. 
Alyssa Kiapa getting a good piece of this one. It looked like Kennedy Watson was going to feel that one, and it just hits off of the heel of her glove, skips far enough away from her to allow Alyssa Kiapa to reach base safely over at first and allow Haley Arvidson to advance on over into scoring position. They're going to rule that one an error on Watson. Here's Nordstrom, one of the powerful bats for New York, their cleanup hitter. Golden opportunity right now for Savannah Nordstrom. She could be a hero right here. If nothing else, try to get away at that lead, and instead Watson is ahead in the count, one, two. This is especially tough for Nordstrom, that lefty on lefty matchup. And she strikes out. Kennedy Watson is one out away from picking up their third straight win for Missouri. And that right there is a great example of Kennedy Watson taking advantage of that lefty-lefty matchup. This is a drop curve moving away from Savannah Nordstrom. Just not able to get her barrel on it. And another huge shift in momentum that we've seen here in the bottom of the sixth inning just as New York started to get something going. Kennedy Watson comes in with a big-time strikeout. It's all up to Ava Handelman to try to pass the bat and keep this ball game alive. And the throw to try to get Kiapa at first base. And now she moves in the scoring position. Diving effort there by Britton to keep the ball in front of her. And perhaps avoid New York getting 60 feet closer to home. Gracie Britton has been very aggressive back there behind the plate, trying to catch runners sleeping. But look at this effort. The diving stop, preventing that ball from getting to the backstop, saved her team a run right there. The 2-1 to Handelman. Handelman pops it up. This one handled by Paige Besky, and that's ball game. A one-hit masterpiece from Kennedy Watson. The embrace, the hugs, the excitement as they shut out New York for their third straight win. Daniel Boone, Little League out of Columbia, Missouri, is looking strong here in the tournament. The updated standings over on the Jenny Finch pool side, three and one. Missouri will have the day off tomorrow. They will watch on as Virginia, who is uh, in the lead, is in action today against Texas. Meanwhile, New York drops to one and two. Final thoughts, Madison. Well,